In this video, I want to discuss the use of 5-HTP for depression and anxiety. More specifically, we will talk about why it works wonders for some people, but brings on horrible side effects for others. As you will see, the reason is actually very simple. To start off, what even is 5-HTP? It stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is a chemical byproduct of the essential amino acid tryptophan. It is usually extracted from the seeds of the African plant Griffonia simplicifolia and then sold as a supplement. On a biochemical level, 5-HTP works in the brain and nervous system by increasing serotonin levels. And that's also why it's used as a natural depression remedy. The idea is simply that more serotonin in the body leads to less depression symptoms and less anxiety. And it appears to work very well for that purpose. To quote one study, 5-HTP easily crosses the blood-brain barrier and effectively increases central nervous system synthesis of serotonin. Another study even saw a reduction in depression symptoms similar to the SSRI Prozac. Because of that, a lot of people try 5-HTP themselves. You can buy it for a few bucks online and you don't need a prescription for it. Some do see benefits, but a lot of people either don't notice anything or they might even get some serious side effects. How is that possible? To understand what's going on here, you need to understand how exactly 5-HTP works on a biochemical level. Like I said before, it's a serotonin precursor, but the conversion process is actually more complex. Here you can see how our body creates serotonin naturally. You eat protein, the body breaks it down into amino acids, and then it takes tryptophan, which is turned into 5-HTP, which then is turned into serotonin. Optionally, the serotonin can also be further converted into melatonin, which, by the way, is why some people also report better sleep when taking 5-HTP. Now, when you're talking about 5-HTP's benefits in regards to depression symptoms, really what you're talking about is increasing one building block towards the natural serotonin synthesis. Before I talk about the possible side effects and why they occur, let's first talk about non-responders. So those people that don't notice anything from the supplementation. You see, the conversion step from 5-HTP to serotonin depends on certain nutrient cofactors. Most important here are vitamin B6, zinc, and vitamin C. If you are low in these, all the 5-HTP in the world won't help you. Unfortunately, people who suffer from chronic stress use up a lot of B6 and zinc, and they're often deficient in it. Same if you're copper toxic or have pyroluria. If you were told to take 5-HTP but don't notice anything, please go check out my videos on these conditions and get your nutrient levels checked. It could be that you're giving your body enough 5-HTP, but don't have a sufficient amount of the cofactors needed to turn that 5-HTP into serotonin. On to 5-HTP side effects. If it's such a great supplement, why do some people report some very serious side effects, like anxiety, increased sweating, or even more serious depression symptoms? So basically what you're trying to fix in the first place. While supplement side effects can always be caused by a number of things, and you definitely want to talk to a professional about this, the most likely cause is your methylation. In general, there are three methylation types, normal methylation, undermethylation, and overmethylation. I explain everything in much more detail in a different video, but what you need to understand is that people who benefit from 5-HTP supplementation are usually undermethylators. They suffer from low neurotransmitter levels, such as serotonin, and you want to increase them. So a good practitioner will give them the building material for these neurotransmitters. It doesn't just have to be serotonin, but it can also be dopamine or neuroadrenaline. Nutritional building blocks could be 5-HTP, methionine, SAMe, and also nutrient cofactors that I talked about before. So B6 and zinc, for example. So for these people, 5-HTP will work well and will fit right into their prescribed nutrition program. But if you're an overmethylator and have already very high neurotransmitter levels, you can run into problems. 
as the name suggests, overmethylators have the opposite problem of undermethylators. They already have an excess of neurotransmitters, which overstimulate the nerve cells and don't get recycled correctly. So you have too much of a good thing. Giving someone like that more 5-HTP will just make the problem worse because you're adding more fuel to the fire. Instead, what you want to give them are nutrients that increase neurotransmitter reuptake. Again, not just serotonin, but you want to bring down their overall neurotransmitter levels. So also dopamine and adrenaline. Some examples would be folates, vitamin B3 and B5, for example. But please don't do this yourself. You need to work with a professional and get tested properly. If you want to learn more about under and over methylators, please check out my video on the Walsh protocol, where I explain everything in much more detail and how these conditions are treated. One last thing I should mention is that undermethylators are statistically more common than overmethylators, and this really skews the data on 5-HTP and studies about it. If you run a study on 5-HTP before checking the methylation status of your participants, most people, so all the undermethylators, will report benefits, while a small number of participants will be at risk of getting side effects so all the overmethylators. Researchers who aren't aware of this will continue to publish studies where this discrepancy gets averaged out and goes unnoticed. This leads to people thinking that they're imagining their side effects when they really aren't. Really what I'm trying to say is that reactions to 5-HTP are highly individual and we need to take into account cofactor nutrients as well as methylation status to fully understand its effect. I hope you like this video and I see you in the next one.